team like Kyrie and KD Or the Lake Show with King James and AD Wish I could match him up with the bad boys from the 80s But no black and white, I need that in HD Yeah, dog. Yo, what's good y'all? It's your boy at Hand Dog and we back to it. You know how we do it. I got a Michael Jordan video for y'all. Uh, I feel like I haven't done a Michael Jordan video in a while. I feel like I've been kind of focusing more on Magic and Larry Bird, especially with Winning Time coming out. If y'all haven't checked that out, go check it out ASAP. But it's time for a Michael Jordan video. It's time for a, a GOAT video. You know, not my GOAT, but THE GOAT. Y'all know who my GOAT is. If y'all don't, then y'all need to go back and watch some of my other videos because then y'all know who my goal is. But let's get into it. Uh, five times Michael Jordan sought revenge. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Maybe maybe him getting cut from his high school team is one and then him just killing in high school and getting that North Carolina offer is probably one of them. But I don't know. But that's the point of us watching the video. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe right now. If y'all like this video, go ahead and like this video. And go ahead and write something in the comments. What other videos do y'all want me to react to? Something I'm gonna start doing soon is I wanna start reacting to actual series. So if you got any, you know, Eastern Conference uh, Finals, Western Conference Finals, NBA Finals, just like any first round, it don't matter. But if it's a really good series, I wanna like start from game one and just react to every single game in that entire series. So if y'all got, what's the, whatever y'all think is y'all favorite series or the best series ever, throw them in the comments, because I, I want to react to the whole thing, like every single game, from game one to hopefully game seven, if it has seven games. But let's get into it, man. We got five times Michael Jordan saw revenge. Let's get it. <laughs> Left them on the street where you found them. Get off me, man! Get him out of here! 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 You knocked him down. Why don't you try knocking me down now? Tommy Gunn only fights in the ring! Is it Rocky? My ring's outside. Yeah? Let's do it. like some good old revenge. It leaves you with a satisfying feeling like you're on top of the world. And Michael Jordan certainly hey. has had his fair share of that experience. When you take him off or provoke him in any way, he turns psychotic. Once you poke the bear, it's too late. You better believe he's going after you. You mother be playing basketball in Pelican Bay. When I get finished with you, I'm the man up in this face. King Kong ain't got shit. Me, so sit back and relax me, as we go through some of the best Michael Jordan revenge stories. Contrary to popular belief, Jordan does have the ability to get along with his opponents. He didn't feel like being intense all the time. Playing golf was his go-to off-the-court activity and didn't mind if a player wanted to tag along. But that hospitality wasn't fooling Jeff Van Gundy. Van Gundy said that MJ would befriend his opponents, making them think that he's a nice guy, just to gain a competitive advantage. His way is to befriend them, to soften them up, make them feel like he cares about them, and then he goes out there and physically tries to destroy them. <laughs> and if Van Gundy thought that he could get away with that without any consequences, he was wrong. He made those comments the day before his New York Knicks were about to play the Chicago Bulls, mm. and the next morning, his quotes were were all over the Chicago newspaper, and that's when Jordan saw what he said, and that only gave him extra motivation to go out there and destroy. It was January 21st, 1997, Knicks visiting Chicago. Once the ball was thrown up in the air, it was time for some sweet revenge. Michael had a personal vendetta for Van Gundy. He shot less than 40%, Jordan gets his first of the night. I think he felt he got pushed a little bit. Shut up, Jeff Van Gundy. You shouldn't have said that. Jeff Van Gundy. Fourth quarter, one ten to go. Jordan in the post over Houston. My thing is, why would Jeff Van Gundy say that? He knew that it was gonna get back to Jordan, 
And he pretty much just set his team up to get destroyed by Jordan. Like, I'm not saying that if I'm a coach. Like, unless you want Jordan to go off, like, why? I mean, it's not like he said anything terrible, but it's just like, why even say anything about this man? Like, you're just asking for trouble at this point. <laughs> Jordan joined with Jeff Van Gundy. Jordan was cursing at Jeff Van Gundy during the entire game. Jordan was 49. Yeah, 50? Jordan now has 50. 51. And he is screaming at Jeff Van Gundy. MJ ended the game with 51 points, doing exactly what he planned to do. Oh he was God. unstoppable, but he wasn't done yet. It was said that immediately after the game, he ran to find Jeff Van Gundy once again and continued to curse him out in the tunnel. Then Van Gundy like tried to backtrack what he said during a post-game interview. What's that now? I couldn't regret saying some of the things about the course of the week about Michael Jordan. I didn't say anything this week about him. What did you say to him after that last basket? Some chores were. Can you give us a clean version? No. Now, well, now he didn't think say that. that George Carl would learn from Van Gundy's mistake, considering this matchup was only one week after that Knicks game. You know, we wish the old uh, Nick coach Jeff Van, Van Gundy in effect called Michael Jordan a con man. He reacting with a 51 point game. Well, this week, as you've seen in the pregame, George Carl said Michael Jordan was playing as if he didn't want to get hurt. I asked Michael about that. And he said George Carl is just playing mind games. As you just heard right there earlier. Why? Why is the coaches messing with Jordan? The players, the players is not saying that. I feel like each uh, player for each team should be like, "Hey, coach, uh, sit this one out, man. Like, it's not worth it. Like, we're the one that has to go against him. Like, you can say all this stuff, but you ain't gonna be the person that's guarding him. Like, you gotta relax, coach." <laughs> that week, as George Carl's Supersonics were getting ready to face the Bulls, he said that Michael Jordan basically became a jump shooter in order to avoid getting hurt while driving to the hoop. And he went on to say that Jordan changed his game because he could no longer fly to the basket for dunks, and that he was holding back in order to protect himself in the later stages of his career. The air has gone out of Jordan's game, that what he and said? Michael did not hesitate to quickly respond. Quote, I'm not scared to go anywhere on the court. When teams give me the jump shot, I'll take it. Right. If they take away the lanes, I'll go for the jump shot. And Ron Harper had some advice for Carl. If I was Coach Carl, I'd be quiet. But. To say anything about Michael's game is ridiculous. Even though Michael did get his point across verbally, you know he wasn't finished with George Carl yet. It was February 1st, 1997, about eight months after the Bulls defeated Seattle in the 96 finals. And right out of the gate, instead of falling for the trap and driving to the basket like Coach Carl wanted, Jordan did the exact thing Carl was talking about, shoot multiple jump shots. MJ was on fire, even shooting a half-court shot right in front of George Carl. Jordan continued to dominate with his jump shot all night long, making Coach Carl feel stupid for ever opening his mouth. Coach Carl had made the comments that Michael Jordan may be becoming too much of a jump shooter. So well, here's a jump shot, and a little hesitation move over Hersey Hawkins. And so I think it's kind of funny because I feel like some people will mostly like do the opposite of what the coach was saying. Like, George Carl was like, you know, he was saying that that Jordan only wanted to shoot jump shots. So you would think that Michael Jordan would do the opposite. Like, no, I'm going to show you that I can get to the hole and that I'm not scared to, uh, to drive. But Jordan, like, all right, this is what you want? All right, here. He go 40, 50 points of me shooting these jump shots. Like, I think that's 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 even worse than doing the opposite, man. Because he pretty much, you're pretty much like, all right, you're the reason why I'm about to shoot all these jump shots against your team, and I'm about to make every single one of them, too. Like, that's hilarious to me. Just a little look over towards the bench and backing up to say, This is what you want, huh? Jump shot. Be careful what you ask for. It was getting ridiculous. Jordan could not be stopped as he ultimately ended the game with 45 points. 45. Now, be careful what you ask for, George Carl. George Carl saying that you're playing, trying not to be hurt. Was that motivation for you today? You know, I, I think Carl, what he's saying is, you know, more than trying to get me to go to the hole. 
I'm going to shoot my jump shot. Defense will give me the jump shot. I'm going to take it. If they want to let me go to the hole, open up the lane. I go to the hole. After the game, Ron Harper commented again, saying, I'm surprised the coaches don't learn. Every time they say something about Michael, it hurts their team. Facts. Well, this next coach, John Calipari, actually did learn to keep quiet. He saw what happened to the last two coaches and wanted none of that. We all are aware that MJ and the 98 Bulls were determined to complete their second three-peat. And their first opponent in the 98 playoffs were the New Jersey Nets with John Calipari as their head coach. The first two games of the series... I never knew that John Calipari was an NBA coach. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. Did y'all know that? were close, but Chicago found a way to get both victories, and they only needed to win one more game to sweep the Nets. Since this was back when the first round was the best of five, New Jersey went into game three believing that they had a great chance to win this one, considering mm. they were so close to winning the other two games. But when you're facing a man that literally makes up scenarios in his head in order to just find anything that will fuel him, you're probably in trouble. You see, Coach Calipari didn't necessarily do anything wrong in this particular instance. He didn't say a single word to or about Jordan, but he didn't have to. It was just the way he coached that rubbed Jordan the wrong way. Oh, shit. Michael said he found it very annoying that John Calipari was always screaming towards his players at the top of his lungs, running up and down the court. He thought he was overdoing it with his sideline antics and said that he doesn't know how the Nets players deal with him. Well, it looked like Jordan found his reason yeah, to go ahead and torch them. He went with it and never looked back. And here's Jordan left over three. three. And he's got it. Michael Jordan. He has been a weapon. Does John Calipari still coach that way? Because I feel like he does. I feel like John Calipari is still a super high energy coach. Running up and down the floor and doing all that. They said Jordan didn't like that. Like he didn't, uh, Calipari didn't say one word to Jordan, but the way he, the way he coached, Jordan hated it. And I think that's kind of hilarious because why would that tick off Michael Jordan? Like the way that the other coach is, is coaching his players. Like I think that's hilarious. That's, that's really just Michael Jordan just, just trying to find, uh, find things to, to have revenge on. Like John Calipari wasn't even thinking about saying nothing to Jordan, but hey, Jordan like, hey, you know what? I don't like the way he coaching. Like, I'm about to take offense to that. Like, that's, that's hilarious, man. For the Bulls against the Nets this year. Jordan working against Kittles. Ooh. Gets Kittles in the air, and Jordan hits. Uh, Captain Michael J. That's so fast. Jordan coming around a rapid screen here. Get that off. Michael Jordan now with 36 points. Right, He's hardly missed from the field. He's just striking distance here. And like you said, Harry Kittles on stand the chance. Michael Jordan on a very difficult shot. Gary Kittles don't stand a Michael chance. Michael finished off the Nets with 38 points. And later, after the game, John Calipari said this about Jordan's death stare. Quote, I didn't stare back. There was one thing I would never do as a coach. Say anything to Michael Jordan. Not one word. If he wants to stare at me, I'm not going to say anything to him. Man, <laughs> no matter what you do, you're never really safe. Right. But this next player was literally asking for it. It was 1994, during Michael Jordan's baseball days. Brian Russell, who was a Ooh, member of Brian the Russell. Utah Jazz, was preparing to play Chicago in an upcoming game. So the night before, he went to go work out, and that's when he saw Michael Jordan with his baseball trainer and thought it was the perfect opportunity to introduce himself. So he went up to MJ and said, Why'd you quit? Why did you retire? I really wanted to get the chance to guard you and defend you I because know I know I can stop you. Stop it. And Jordan just laughed it off and acted like he wasn't even bothered. But we all know Michael made sure to remember what he said. Now fast forward to 1996. Jordan was back in the league and when he played Utah, he was well aware that Russell would be there. And right before the jump ball, he turned to Russell and said, remember back in 94? Damn. You're about to get your chance. Oh! Come here, Russell. What a right, little left. What a show, and they love it here in Utah. Watch Michael's move. Watch this. What? Oh, where'd he go? Oh. That was so nasty. Oh, man. Poor Brian Russell. That broke his ankles. And ever since, Brian Russell had a huge bullseye on his back. 
as MJ made an effort to go after him every single time they played each other. Now, fast forward again a couple years later, Jordan could practically taste his sixth championship as he would get a chance to take the lead after stripping the ball from Malone. And would you look at that, Michael couldn't ask for a better guy to guard him. Russell claimed that Jordan obviously pushed off. But at the end of the day, there was nothing he can do about it. Oh Many God. years later, at the tail end of MJ's Hall of Fame speech, he talked a little bit about Brian Russell and said this. So did he push off y'all? I've asked this in, you know, plenty of my Michael Jordan videos where they bring up this, this clip. And I get mixed reviews sometimes. Some people say he did push off. Some people say he didn't push off. I even get some people that say he kind of pushed off, but not enough for it to be a foul. Like, I, I done heard a bunch of different stuff. So, we right there. That, that's watching. Write in the comments right now. Did Michael Jordan push off on Byron Russell? I definitely don't think he did at all. But let me know, man. I listen on that point. And from this day forward, if I ever see him in shorts, I'm coming at him. <laughs> and Russell took that as a challenge. Damn, yeah, huge. How's it going for you? Good, good, good. Just making sure I stay in somewhat shape. Uh, getting ready to call out MJ. Uh, <laughs> you and Michael on this court, you spot him six, game seven. Who wins? He's on this side. Uh, whoop his ass. <laughs> That's it. Hands down. I'm weak. Okay, last one. When Last MJ one. arrived on the scene, he was like nothing we've ever seen before. He had stardom written all over him and effortlessly made the all-star team as a rookie. Mm. But what was supposed to be a special night for the young kid turned out to be ruined by what is now known as the infamous freeze-out. It's been said that allegedly Isaiah Thomas came up with a plan to not pass Jordan the ball on purpose and convinced all the other players to do the same, which seemed to have actually worked considering Jordan only scored seven points. Have y'all ever heard this story? I've never ever heard this story about a freeze out. If, if y'all have, kind of give me some more information than what they're going to give me right here because I think I'm going to need a little bit more than just whatever this one, two minutes they about to talk about because I've never heard of this freeze out game. So let me know in the comments about this a little bit. For the whole night, some people say that everyone was jealous by all the attention MJ was getting and they found him very arrogant. And others say it was because MJ was more beloved in the city of Chicago than Isaiah was, who is a Chicago native. Either way, they did not want Jordan to be the star of the All-Star game. And it looked like Jordan took it personal. Because just two nights later, the Chicago Bulls' very first opponent after the All-Star break was the Detroit Pistons. And Michael absolutely went off, putting up 49 points, 15 rebounds, and 5 assists. And from there on out, Michael played possessed whenever he faced Detroit, forming a rivalry. But Jordan and the Bulls kept coming up short in the playoffs. They just couldn't seem to get past the Pistons until finally, in 1991, they swept them, causing Isaiah and the rest of the team to walk off and without shaking. shaking hands. And, M and they say that was the reason why uh, Isaiah Thomas didn't go to the Olympics. Because it was up to Jordan. And I don't think it's ever been confirmed, but I'm almost positive that in order to get Michael Jordan to play on the Olympics, it was pretty much his say so on who was gonna be on the team. And he didn't he didn't he didn't pick Isaiah. He said, I I'm cool on Isaiah. I know he's one of the most talented, but for one, we don't need him. Cause we got more than enough talent. And for two, I don't like him. You know, he he was a bad sport. He walked off the court when we finally beat him. Like, he'd been beating me for years. And then when I finally beat him, he walks off the court and I shake my hand. And on top of all of that, I didn't know about this freeze out. So, if that's true, I completely understand why Jordan didn't mess with him. Why he didn't uh, invite him to the Olympics. Because of the freeze out and because of not shaking my hand. So, that really Isaiah really didn't rock with Jordan for real. He was really jealous and, and Jordan found that out. MJ took that as a slap to the face, and a few months later, Isaiah would learn to regret that decision. In the summer of 1991, the members of the USA Basketball Committee took note and remembered the unsportsmanlike move Isaiah did, and decided to leave him off of the 1992 Olympic team, now known as the Dream Team. 
At first, many were confused about that decision, but then it all started to make sense because it was rumored that Michael orchestrated the whole thing by saying that he would only play on the team if Isaiah was not on the team, getting some sweet revenge with his own little freeze out. Alright guys, I know there are several more Michael Jordan revenge stories out there, but this is where I'm going to end the video. So make sure to comment down below what your favorite one was, yeah. and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Great video, man. Great video. But my last question to y'all is, it's just an opinion. You know, there's no right or wrong answer. We don't really know. But we might know. Isaiah might have came out and said it, but I didn't hear it. But do y'all think that Isaiah really wanted to go play for the Dream Team? Because, I mean, we can say all this stuff, but, you know, um, he did all these things to kind of X himself out of the Dream Team. But obviously, he did all that stuff for a reason, you know, freezing out Jordan and not shaking his hand. So he probably didn't like Jordan. So did he even want to go to the, to the uh, Olympics? Maybe we do all this stuff about how he should have been there and it's so messed up that he didn't go and didn't get invited. But... For all I know, Isaiah probably didn't want to go. He probably didn't even like the players on the team. But I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think about that. But I appreciate y'all watching this video. It was a really good one. Um, I think it's some more things out here where it's the five times of blank salt revenge. I already did the Larry Bird one. So go check that one out if y'all haven't. Um, if it's some more like this, I'm going to get into all of those. But I...